Welcome back into Strange Ways, episode seven and ranking Ace Freely's Kiss songs. And we got Ace up above me or beside me, Ooh. however this turns out. I've got my Ace blue lights. And uh, I will turn it over to Ace Freely, lead guitar. Shock me. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Hey, at least I get to play the part for a little bit. I'll take it. Um, can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, I just I have to talk a little louder. Um, yeah, it's it, you can tell you're talking behind a mask, but you can hear it fine. All right. We're going to rank Ace Fraley's songs. He's probably said it. I'm going to tell you again because I have dementia. We're going to rank them. Studio. No solo albums, nothing else. Just like Peter. We are going to use side four of the Alive 2 because those are studio tracks. So, how many did you come up with? I, because I have 11. Oh, you do? I have 11, and, and, uh, just doing a quick internet search, uh, freaking Wikipedia insists there's 12 and there's not. There's 11. I got 10. How, do you have the bonus track off of Psycho Circus in your face? No, but I want to use it. I'll use that. Okay. In, don't, yeah, I'll don't use forget, it in your Don't face. forget I to slide it in. in. Okay. What we'll do is we'll let you take the helm this time. All right. So my number 11 is going to be my only song by Ace that I can truly say I do not like start to finish. And it's not a shocker because it came off of an album that was talk about rushed, uh, Psycho Circus and uh, Into the Void. That uh, Ace and Peter's contributions to this album were beyond garbage. And um, I, I, I can't stand anything about it. I don't like the music. I don't like the verse. I don't like the chorus. I just, this is a garbage song to me. And that's the only one you're going to hear me say about Ace that I absolutely can't stand really yep i get tired of the space band crap um okay. you know when, 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 he, when he, into the void. huh which one did you say into the void okay, okay. i mean I'm just playing. because jeans that just because jeans the demon he doesn't sing every song about evil demon stuff i mean i don't know why they make ace or ace chooses to do 90 percent of his crap about electricity or space but it just gets cheesy to me after a while <clears throat> well i'm i'm probably not too far off i wasn't crazy about the song either and believe it or not the whole album was subpar with the exception of a few songs uh, even before i knew what happened you know with the recording so okay hey Number 10 for me. A song that I probably never have liked by Ace. Um, I can say this about Ace. That there's some songs that I just don't dig by him. Peter, there was only one. Yeah. Um, Torpedo Girl. I never got it. I still don't get it to this day. I didn't get it when I was 10 years old, rocking out there unmasked. And I don't know, man. We're talking about going swimming, man, I guess. And there's torpedo girls hanging out on submarines, bro. Um, I've never went swimming in a place like that, but hey, more power to you, Ace. Yeah, and I got that as my next one at number 10. And I believe it was Lewis in the comments when uh, we discussed this on the uh, ranking the songs on Unmasked when we did all the, or ranking the albums and we, you know, both kind of said we didn't like this. He, he insists that we're just getting caught up on, on the cheesy intro. So I went and listened to it after reading his comment. No, I, the song just does nothing for me. Uh, musically, lyrically, uh, the intro obviously doesn't help set the stage for an already weak song. Uh, that intro is beyond cheesy. It's like watching some 1970s B flick, you know, war movie or it just, it's absolutely unlistenable. That intro, 
the song not as bad as into the void obviously why it's at 10 instead of 11 but still not something i would ever listen to on purpose how do you like that bass line dun, 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 I, dun, dun, dun. I hate that i absolutely hate that that sounds like some uh porn flick bass group i cannot stand that um and people act like if it's got a bass line that stands out that means the song is golden it's great bass playing no I, I, there can be crappy bass and that is terrible what i mean that is mean? I, I i before we get too many ace really fans it's going to get better this is just ace like you said had a few more stinkers than peter so <clears throat> and that's right and look i'm an ace man dude at this point in time and have been for a while he's my favorite one so don't bash me too hard. We got to put them somewhere. Um, all right, my number nine is Dark Light off of the Elder. Now, look, dude, I love Ace's solo, even though it sounds like he was falling down and fell down steps and everything while he was playing it. My gosh, he rips the shit out of it, even if it doesn't go with the song or it doesn't even rhyme with anything. <laughs> I love the solo, but if you get rid of the song and just give me the solo, it might get a little bit higher. Um, I hate that he put something like that on The Elder because, to me, The Elder was about two songs from being a literal masterpiece to me. So, and it still has grown on me a lot to this day. I love the album now, but I just can't dig dark light. Okay. That was your 10. Uh, my number nine is the bonus track I spoke of in your face. Uh, listening to other podcasts, they seem to treasure this as some unforgivable, you know, mistake that this was not released on an album. I, don't get that uh, i don't buy ace as a tough guy um and it, it's like he's trying to come off as mr you know street mafia guy i just and i hate when he uses the third person talk uh mentioning himself by name really? I, I can't stand that shit he does that in rock soldiers he's gonna have to play without an ace in his deck and ace is back because he tells you fuck off I can't stand that pretentious. You're not a god. Shut up and just sing the fucking song. Uh, there's so many things about Ace that bug me that it it's he's the most polarizing member of this band, and that includes Vinnie Vincent, for Christ's sake. Um, I can absolutely love him or I can absolutely despise him. It just depends on what we're talking about. And this yeah, song is a decent, a decent enough song. Uh, but I can see why it got left off the album. Even as weak as that album was, I can see why this got left off. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you ain't been up long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get slaughtered. Just, you know, anytime I talk about Ace, they forget about all the love I throw them later on, and they just focus on the stuff. His stuff, when, it, when it's bad to me, it's so fucking bad, I can't even be nice about it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, I won't refer to myself as I won't say, well, Scott, don't play that, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> put it this way. Ace, Ace would, would never want to be on my podcast. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Okey -dokey, All right. Next one for me. Two sides of the fucking coin. Look. Everybody knows, well, that did know when I had a platform that Unmasked Ace songs was not my thing because I literally just could, oh, shit. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm learning something here, man. Um, I just two sides of the coin to choose from I, I, put some kick ass in that song or something to make the album a little heavier I, I left it up to Ace 
he could have see there's another album there's another album ace's three songs on that album could have literally transformed unmasked i'm not blaming him personally for the whole destruction but i am blaming him for getting three songs on that album and shitting out every one of them that's just my opinion it could have really been a dynasty to me that's the ones i loved more and where was uh, peter on unmatched by the way peter i mean i know he didn't play on it anton fig did is that why he didn't get a song because he's coming yeah, off of peter, dynasty with a kick-ass 11. Yeah, Peter Peter was already gone before they oh, made that album. Okay. The only anyway, thing that. he done, the only thing he done in that album was the video for Shandy. He said when we went back after the video shoot for Shandy, we took our makeup off. They walked out and he took his stuff off. He said, Well, this is it, man. This is the last time I'm gonna be he was there by himself. So it was, you know, so like, was kind of like Ace doing the video for I Love It Loud, but having nothing to do with creatures. Yeah. And Creatures of the Night, yep. yeah. Okay. And, anyway. uh, Anton Chig done, done the album. Eric Carr done the tour. Yeah. So back to your ripping of one of my favorite Ace songs. Wow. Man, you're the first one I've ever heard say that too, bro. Like I said, we're different on this podcast, people. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it's about. Okay. So that was your number what? That was my number, let's see, 11, 10, 9. Okay. Nine. So my number eight, uh, and I hate doing this and I get flack doing this. Uh, it could be such a great song if they had restructured the chorus. And that is save your love. Uh, we've talked about this, uh, Lewis, who is a commenter of the channel. Uh, if you check out his Lewis for uh, website, he made a, a version of this where he cuts that droning down. Uh, but are you serious? I didn't know you felt so strongly. The song is great and tell the court. I'll just leave it at that. All right. That's what kills it. Yeah. Save your love, man. I love it. I love it. It's such a good song. And that's why, well, I can't say we'll get to it when we get to mm -hmm. it. Whew. Let's get some oxygen. All right. Mm -hmm. Um next one for me, which will be uh eight. Seven. Yeah, yeah eight for you. Eight for me is going to be into the void, <laughs> you know, and this could have easily been below the two unmasked tracks, dude. I really shit you not as big of an ace guy as I am. Uh, I took to the song when it came out because, yeah, this is back, you know, I mean, it, I was like a damn. 10 year old goober fan again, you know, I was made for love and use a fucking masterpiece you know i didn't give a shit it was kiss man makeup original four but that album there and that song has just with the exception of a couple just has not grown at all good with me and okay. the bitter i guess i get more bitter as time goes on uh into the void there you go another with a chorus man i like the song until the chorus starts that's that's just the way I am with it. I, I thought it was good starting out. I love everything about it. But the chorus, to me, just like Save Your Love for you, it crashes it into the ground for me. Good enough. My number seven, and I'll probably get blasted for this, is one of the most overrated, not say it's bad, overrated oh. Ace songs. His first song shocked me. And even as a kid, the only reason I would listen to this song on this or alive too was for Paul and Gene's fills in the chorus, uh, singing them make me feel better and stuff because Ace has got the most monotone voices at times and shock me is the living embodiment of monotone uh, lyric voice. Uh, I'm not going to touch on solos and stuff to me solos can rarely save a song so i'm not saying the solo's not great 
I'm saying that the song itself, and again, even as we're talking an elementary school kid who, believe it or not, and none of the people on this channel will ever believe me, even though I did post a picture of me in elementary school dressed up with Ace Freely makeup on, Ace was my first favorite KISS member. He has since become my least favorite of the original four um, because I became much more of a vocal person. So Paul took over very early. And then, of course, Peter's vocals are off the charts and, and Gene being the demon. Uh, so nothing personal against Ace. It's just he fell out of favor because his songs, vocals mean everything to me. And he cannot sing lead. He should never sing lead. Uh, <laughs> But it is what it is. Uh, it's a good song. That's how you really feel, man. Yeah, it's a good song. It's <laughs> yeah. just extremely overrated. And if it was not for Paul and Gene saving him on the choruses with those fills, this would have been even lower on the list. I will agree with you on one thing, bro. Ace, the studio helped Ace. Mm -hmm. And Peter even says it in his book itself. I think I've said it before. He said I'm glad Ace finally got, got enough guts to sing a song. He said, but we have to agree that he probably has the worst song voice. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and at, at times he can sound just like Connolly, the singer of Sweet, right? Fox on the Run is like the same voice as 2000 Man, if you're comparing Sweet and Ace Freely. So he's got a range that really works for him and then the rest just falls incredibly flat so one is what it yeah is. hey I, I agree man i do agree that ace did get a little bit better over time yeah uh I, I mean just you have to you have to like kiss to like ace is that's just it i was thinking that the other night if you take most ace freely songs and take his existence out of kiss and just say he was some artist and put these songs out. How many of these diehard Ace fans would like these songs if he was never Ace Freely? You know, it, does that make sense to you? If he was never Spaceman Kid and they it just does. heard these songs, uh, how many of these people would really, you know, hang their flag on these songs? That that's my question. Especially the ones I've named so far. Now yeah. I ain't gonna say that about all his songs, but especially <laughs> the ones I've named so far. Um Okay, we're at number six, right? Or seven? Seven for you. Who started? Okay. Yeah, seven. All for right, you. man. <laughs> All right, my next one is. Wow. This is the last one that I don't really go to or, or care for. Um, talk to me, he. Talk to me, he. Talk to me. I just want to talk to you. Dad, kill me. Oh, where is it? I, there it is. This is Ebony. This, you say? this is the littlest one, Ebony. Ebony, okay. All right. Yeah, I got one at my feet on her back right now. She's been aggravating me all evening. Um, yeah, talk to me. There, there we go. I'm done with Unmasked. Thank God. Um, now, this song here, I like. I like the way it begins. I like the aces. I really like the way he sang the song, believe it or not. Uh, but when they start with the talk to me, he talked to me, that, there you, that's what we're talking about, loving parts of songs and literally hating parts right. of songs. That just takes it down to the ground for me when they, I just can't get into that. I can't understand why they've done that, but that's me. You know, the rest of them I can live with. And then I love the probably last three, four that I really love. So, And, and don't I, get I, me wrong, everybody. I love Ace for his guitar playing. I love mm. Ace image for his persona. It's just as a singer, he's not the strongest voice. And if you're the biggest, most diehard Ace Freely fan and you're honest with yourself, you got to know he's just not a great lead singer. So, and, and he fit, he fit for what he did sing because he really didn't sing that much. And, you know, 
I was talking about Peter not knowing, realizing he just sung 10. Hell, I didn't know, you know, not counting the bonus track. Uh, Ace only got 10 songs. And think you about know, that. So they, he didn't even start till 78 on Love Gun. I mean, Peter got to start right away on the second album. Exactly. But it, it just seems like Ace sung more. I don't know why. Just it's, I guess, because he's got three on two different albums. Maybe that's what it is. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Number six for me is the cover of the Rolling Stones 2000 Man. A very fun song. And thanks to one of our commenters, uh, when we were discussing this on one of the other videos, I had said, asked if this was ever even recorded by the Stones or if it's just something Richards wrote. And he gave me the album and the track number that it was. And I YouTubed it. And it is fucking brutal by the Rolling Stones. So this is one Ace absolutely knocks out of the park if you want to compare it to the Rolling Stones. Well, I'm glad you said that because I'll I've never heard the one from oh, the Stones. Fuck, dude, it, you got to listen to it just just out of you know some kind of sadomasochism reasons to put yourself. Even my wife says, she's like, Jesus Christ, it's like three different songs all combined. It is the most fucking bizarre, weird thing ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, believe it, believe it or not, just a, quick note, uh, just a quick note, um, I do like uh, Sympathy for the Devil from the Stones. That's probably No, I like some Rolling Stones. I like Rolling Stones songs. Don't get me That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this was horrible recorded by the rolling stones well no wonder that's why i've never heard it nobody yeah. hardly ever talks about it you know yeah, yeah it's bad um all right next up is the one you've done touched on um that should have been on psycho circus instead of into the void not ace strong song but it does got one hell of a beat punch through it i'm not talking about what he's singing about or anything, but the mute. I mean, it really does blow into the void away from me. Song. And, from and me. now that you now that you brought that up, I'm glad you just did. When I said I can see why it was left off, I, I take that back. It should have been there instead of into the void. I can see why it wasn't on there additionally. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, and that that's where it falls for me. At that's number five. I do like this song. This is not by no means a number one A song for me. Uh, it never will be um, unless I'm just old with Alzheimer's and say it is. But uh, I do like the song. I'm I'm a guilty liker of of in your face. It rips to me. Now this is to me. A lot of people's probably gonna give me shit for this because I know there's a lot of people out there that loves into the void. And, but I think it rips into the void and you asshole. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to yeah. compare, compare the two, it's a, it's worlds better than into the void. I just don't think it's as great a song as some podcasters think it is. Uh, no. but, uh that was your number five. You sure? Did I start this one? That should have been your numbers. Yes. Yeah. You did start this one. So it should be your number six. Cause my number six was 2000 men. It is, it is my number six. Okay. So not number bad. five, number five, <laughs> number five, you, you touched on already for me and it's dark light. And it's funny. You should mention that solo as a kid. I absolutely love this song. Uh, as an adult, I love everything about the song except the solo. And in listening to this last night, not that it's a bad solo. I don't recall ever here. There's the kitty. Oh, what a beautiful specimen anyway um i don't think i've ever heard a solo that drops out all bass and all rhythm it is just drums and the lead guitar it's like they were just jamming in the studio and forgot to hit stop on record or forgot to go back and add bass and i, I don't understand that uh it's incredible solo like you said yes. it does not it does not fit the song at all all it's like they had a jam yeah. session that recorded over part of the song and they said ah fuck it just leave it in there it yeah. just comes out of nowhere has no rhyme or reason is just ace and and eric carr 
the rest of the band out on a coffee break. I don't know, no other music in the background. Uh, but other than that and the stupid Jaws intro, I like the song. I don't know why you needed that dung 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 dung. I mean, what what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> but the song itself, I don't mind if you take that. Yeah, take Jaws out of there and the unfinished, pointless solo, uh, as talented as it was, and it's a much better song. Well, I can I can jump on there with you a little bit about that because the solo really is what saved the uh, song for me, but. Damn, dude, uh, warn anybody that listens to The Elder for the first time and they're listening to it in their car stereo and they're driving down the road, when that solo starts, don't get alarmed and don't, you know, jerk the wheel or anything because I'm telling you, bro, it sounds like he's being electrocuted, man. I, I did not know Ace. I did on a few of his solos, but damn, I didn't know he could move that fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Think about it. He really is ripping the hell out of it. His fingers has got to be just absolutely insanely. I mean, people, you know, give a shit about it. he can't do this. Get, hey, how the hell to get okay, but, but that's like saying Keith Richards can't shred or something. How do you know when it's not the Rolling Stones style? It at this time wasn't Kiss's style to feature a shredder. That doesn't mean they can't do it. That just means they're choosing that's not their style for the music they're playing. That's it. Exactly. I agree wholeheartedly, bro. And um, we will move to number five for me. And it is a song that I love. Here we go with the love the rest of them. Um, Hard Times on Dynasty. It was very, very, very hard for me to rank the Dynasty songs, dude. I was really in turmoil over that, but it's just where this one fell. And I got nothing against none of these songs from here up. And I love Hard Times. I love the beat. Anton Fig, I know it wasn't Peter, does a great job beating him down drums in that song. Ace, and the Hard Times. Ace delivers good vocals on this song. He doesn't over sing or or sound live thank god he really just sings the song and i've always loved this song hard times man everything off i'll get to it but yeah so my number four is the legendary rocket ride off of side four of alive two this is a fabulous song to me way better than shock me and should always be the one if kiss was going to continue with ace songs after ace was gone should have been rocket ride not shock me um great solo great great lyric great chorus i love everything about that song um and to me as far as kiss the band is concerned the most underrated ace song because it was not featured with or without ace very often it was always shocked me, and I don't understand when you had Rocket Ride. I'm going to touch on it a little bit because I've got to get there, but you're right. You're, everything you just said, I agree with. Not Nothing you just said, I don't agree with. And the funny thing is this song was released as a in single. Yeah. I never heard it on the damn radio, I don't think. No. So... All right, man, my number four is, you done touched on it, and this probably could very easily be number two. Yeah, Save Your Love. This is probably one of the, if not the, best vocal performances from Ace that I ever heard on a Kiss album. Really? With the exceptions of, the damn course. Yeah. When he starts, oh yes, oh my gosh, Ace Ace sings this thing so good. It, it is. It oh is a- I love how the, he see he'll get heavy and he'll he's even got an echo in this song, man. And, and he's got anger in his voice. Exactly, and then he's got a mellow part of this song and an anger part, and it really fits. And to me, 
I, this, if that damn chorus, man, it, mm, this could have been an unbelievable song. I love everything about this song but the chorus. But everything I think is perfection but the chorus and it's shit. That's yeah. why it got so high. And, that, and that's I a goddamn love. shame because it's rare that a single part of a song can just train wreck the entire thing. But this is one where that chorus, if they would have reimagined that somehow, uh, yes. this is the best song ever. Yeah. I, I know. I agree. Okay. So number three for me, you just touched on uh, hard times. I love this Ace Freely. Uh, same with Save Your Love. Same with a couple more on this list. When he puts away the Spaceman lyrics and the electricity lyrics and just sings like a dude about dude stuff, that's when he's at his absolute best. You look at Into the Night, even off of uh, Freely's Comet, and Rock Soldiers and, and Trouble Walking. And when he's just being Ace Freely, the rock star, instead of the cheesy ass space band thing, his songs are so much better. Um, I love it. Hard Times, I absolutely have always loved from the minute I heard it to modern times. Cocky Ace Freely uh, that you don't hear very often. It's got a real funky groove to it. I just absolutely love the song. Hey, I'm out with you on that, bro. <laughs> we about got, I don't think we're going to get a hit on this one. No, we're not, because you've already crapped on my top two, so. <laughs> oh, okay. I did not know. I didn't know if we hit on one torpedo girl or anything like that. We'll, we'll quickly go over the list if we got time. Uh, all right, my next one is which is number three you've hit on already 2000 man i think it's always been my favorite a song on dynasty and i never knew like i've said before with everything they've redone i always thought kiss that was their song a lot of these songs i've still ain't heard to this day and whoever sung them god love them they made these songs their songs in my opinion, when they did remakes, this one in particular, and Dynasty, they saved this album for me with the exception of a couple from Paul and Gene. I like both his songs, but a charisma really. But anyway, Chris, charisma, uh, yeah. Yes, and and uh, that just that that just that crazy lyrics, man, just. It, this is a futuristic song. This is a song that should have been made in 2000 with computers and and Ace is just, you know, this is 1979. He's talking about, you know, having an affair with a damn computer and shit. And, you know, it's just, cr the lyrics are crazy as hell, man. You it know, if you, sense just, because Ace was a computer guy. This is Keith Richards who wrote this. You know, the ultimate... Exactly burnout living in a drugged up world saying, I mean, how, how much was he predicting the future and who knows exactly. when they wrote this, it was definitely earlier than 79. So, and you know, they was, was high as a cat when, they, oh yeah, when he wrote some, it. some mushroom trip or something. LSD. Hey, whatever it made, it yeah. made uh, it's a good song. There you go. All right. Well, we did a lot of rambling about ACE as he tends to bring out in people. So we've got less than two minutes. We are going to have to unfortunately pause and come back to finish ACE Freely's top two spots. Right back with you. Okay. Let's finish off. What did you, I just did. My number three was hard times. What was your number three? My number three was, oh, damn it. My number three was uh, 2000 Man. Okay. So my number two and one are not going to make you happy, but hear me out. There's a reason That's for cool. this. Um, I just got done saying how Ace is so monotone. These next two songs to me are Ace actually singing, showing he could sing if he really, really, you know, maybe it's a studio helping him, who knows. But these two songs are what I feel he sings, and that's why I really love them. And they're not space, and they're just normal rock tunes. My number two is Talk To Me. Uh, this floored me, and even, believe it or not, my mom 
when this came out was like, who is that? And she really liked this song. It He sings so well in this song. Um, and to me, it's just, I, I get what you're saying. It kind of has that poppy talk to me, he uh, stuff with the chorus. But it's just, th- this to me might be Ace's best uh, performance as a singer, uh, not as a vocalist. You know, obviously hard times, he's got some killer vocals on a lot of songs. But as a pure singer, this to me showcases that at least then he could sing. Uh, and it just really always struck me as a really fun song that had some talented uh, vocals to it from Ace. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to lick my fingers and stick it on a live wire. Yeah. No, look, no, I'm just aggravating you. Look, I, look, I, just, just so we get this for the record and get it straight. I have no problem with the way he sings on Unmasked. I think his voice has gotten it got better over time. Uh, but it's just like you said, that there's certain things about the song that drives me insane. Right. The torpedo door girl, for God's oh, sakes, man. that whole song drove me insane. And talk to me, it's my favorite song by him on that album until it goes, me, he talked, that's, what kills it for me everything else i can live with the, and i can see that because you're kind of the more heavier rock guy and i'm kind of the more leaning towards pop rock guy so i can yeah. we can, i can already see in our brief you know history here together where we do differ musically where we have a lot of common ground you lean heavier i lean lighter and that's good that's a good mix to have on a podcast absolutely and yeah. see that'll that'll make me pay attention to more what you like better. And I'll even if I hadn't listened to the songs in a while, I'll ch- I'll check them out just to see what it is. Maybe so you know a lot of times things hit you different. Just like you said, you went back and listened to the first album again, and you was like, better "Wow, I've, yeah. I've seen this better, worse than what it was." You know that's the way it works sometimes. But do me a favor as far as going back and listening. Do yourself a favor or a torture and YouTube 2000 man by the Rolling Stones and, and give me, okay. your, give me your honest opinion because you are into more of that early rock than I was being a couple of years older. So I'm just curious for me, it was horrific. Uh, maybe it's because I, you know, spent my whole life listening to Ace Freely do it masterfully. Um, I don't know, but it was hard to get through the whole song for me. But anyway, you know, it, it hits you the way it hits you, bro. And yeah. like I said, everybody's different, man. You know, and don't get me wrong. I do love a lot of the pop rock, a lot of the softer rock things. It's just certain this things. Was, this about was the downright world. psychedelic the way the Rolling Stones did it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, well, I guess kind of like sympathy with the devil. I mean, makes mm-hmm. sense out of that damn song, bro. But I like it. It makes sense. To That's me. what I'm saying. So just do yourself a favor and at least check. Because I'm 50. And I hadn't heard the Rolling Stones do it till a couple of days ago. So, all right, I'll check it out, bro. Your all number right, two. Uh, my number two is a song you just set on fire and flush down the toilet with a big turd a while ago, and made me want to jump out of this room. <laughs> Shocking me, man. Oh, dude, look, I know nostalgia. Ace's first song, and. Believe me, I've heard this song so many times, and I love it to this day. I loved it a little more back when I was younger uh, because Ace was singing. You yeah. know, rumors, we got to get on that too, man, one day, because they were rumors, man, of all Gene's tongue. That was a real rumor. It was yeah. a cow's tongue. We, yeah. we, that rumor went around when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, Ace, believed it. Was, I believed it. I believed it. Ace was deaf. He couldn't sing. That was the rumor until that happened. See, it's just crazy. Oh, and another one, Ace, the real Ace Frehley's dead. Yeah. That's like the real Ace. Just like the real Paul McCartney's dead. (laughs) Yeah. It's just unbelievable. But anyway, shock me, man. I think he tears the lead slam ass up. He, 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 that is Ace. It's crazy, off balance, playing, singing, 
that's him through and through, man, with his songs and his style. A lot of people, it either grabs you or you're like, man, get the hell away from the microphone. And I'm like that part of the time with him, no shit. But the other part, that's what I love about Ace. And that's what I love about what he brought to the band, his style and his just space. He couldn't have got a different, you know, stereotypical character for that guy. But uh, I love the song, Always Have. Peter, credit, he drums his ass off in that damn song. It's yeah, he a does. heavy, heavy song, probably one of the heaviest on Love Gun. I mean, far as just pure power. And Gene and Paul harmonizing, I just, I, I'm one of the lovers of it. But it ain't my number one. All right, well, my number one, you have also shit on and flushed on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and that is two sides oh, of the ball. Oh God. Yeah. Fine. You don't, don't, don't talk to me. Okay. This this to me is much like Savior Love. You he does some yelling in here in the in his singing. Uh well, and, two sides of the <laughs> I mean, he's just <laughs> taking it to you. I I the verses to me are weaker than the chorus, where you said the chorus kind of ruined it for you. The verse yeah. I've been some ladies, I've been some ladies, just kind of just eh, okay. This is it. but oh, the, it's the course, the, yeah. It's the course on talk to me, mostly. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, two sides of the coin, I think he does that pretty good. It's just do you go ahead and finish it, up? <laughs> yeah. I, I just I think it's singable, I think it's danceable. Uh, you get a little bit of both, right? You get the the lazy, like you say, off balance, awkward ace type through the verses. I met some ladies, and then just he just yeah, tears you <laughs> going into that chorus. I I love when Ace has that angry tone to his voice. Me too. Uh, that's why I'm saying if you look at these two sides of the coin, talk to me, hard times, dark light, Sex, yeah, yeah. Uh, shock me is a little bit about the electricity, but. You start getting into that, into the void and torpedoes. Uh, when he gets that cheesy character, the songs tend to follow it with the the lack of substance. And when he just sings about life on the streets, hard times, and talk to me about a relationship, he becomes a different singer almost when he yeah. puts that space shit to the side. Uh, like I said, even going into uh, his... Uh, Freely's comment with Into the Night and Rock Soldiers. And I mean, I yeah, just, man. I like it, it. That's the only way I can describe it is when he pulls his head out of that space cloud and just be as a rock star. He's so much, it's like his music gets better for me. <laughs> it's like a Jekyll and Hyde character. So, yeah, I mean, imagine Gene saying everything like he did God of Thunder. It wouldn't work. No, I mean, and you're, it, not gonna, you're not going to. I mean, Gene knew how to separate the demon songs from the regular songs. And even to this day, through Ace's solo work, he just holds on to that spaceman gimmick. And he's not the spaceman anymore. He doesn't have makeup on. Just be a rock star. And he's so much better when he does that. All right, now, I'm going to have to call you on this, bro. Ace is always going to be the spaceman. And you know why? He's from Jam Dale, brother. That's a whole different fucking planet. This guy, I mean, and Peter, I think, was believing him back when they got together, man, because he, he's even in Peter's book. Peter said, you know, this guy's from another planet. He even says so. Well, that, <laughs> that's com that's up, combining man. two different spaces. I think a bigger reason, besides he loved his UFO stuff and supposedly had got yeah, abducted. Yeah, technology, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. But the other part of space ace comes from because he was spaced out of his fucking mind half the time on drugs and alcohol. Yeah, man. I mean, so, I mean, it, yeah, he's a character to say the least. I'm not saying he's not. I think he'd be a fucking hell of a guy to hang out with. Oh, my uh, gosh. And oh my he's, gosh. he's hysterical. His laugh is infectious. I just musically, when he sings about normal shit, it seems to be a better song. It relates to you better. Yeah. Yeah, yes. and his voice really changes. Think, his whole about, voice and demeanor changes. Think <laughs> about the songs Ace has wrote and hasn't sung. Oh, fuck Jesus Christ. Christ, for Christ's sakes. You know, those songs could be well better than the ones he's actually wrote and sung. I mean, look at Cold Gin, uh, Parasite. Yeah, Cold Gin. Just oh. uh, get away. But anyway, 
I ain't getting off topic, but yeah, you can get you can get caught up in a lot of shit yeah. with him. Um, yeah. Number one, do you said it perfect a while ago? You didn't down the song that saved you right there, man. Thank God I didn't have to come to South North Dakota. But <laughs> Rocket Ride, yeah. man. Yeah, they shit all over those songs. The band, not Ace, but Paul and Gene, mostly Paul. But anyway, not to get off the track. I love his spacey. I know it's playing that down through the damn song. Peter with his wicked ass, just oh. arms flying off drum solo at the end. And, Ace with that lead, you know, and it just, and then the way they end that song, man, listen to the power. I mean, it's just, oh, that's Ace. That song sums up Ace. Shock Me was my favorite song by Ace when I was young. As I started growing and getting a little older in teenage years, Rocket Ride, I've always loved, though, but that, that one's always probably been my number one song that hasn't changed for decades. That song to me encapsulate Ace character, his Deep. whole demeanor, his brain, his whatever. That's him, and I think he just beautifully done it. Even though that's not my favorite song on side four, but it's probably my second or third. It's right there. It is perfect. God, to those songs. To me, man, the I two songs in Ace's Kiss career. Now, I am one of these is going to be on the solo album that personify who Ace is as not only a singer and a guitar player is Rocket Ride and Rip It Out. To me, those oh, two songs yeah. just is prime Ace being Ace. <laughs> and unfortunately, I hate to go back and say this, but Ace, how much time we got? Uh, Plus minutes. We got plenty. Okay. Of okay. Ace, um, I wish they would have took Scrap Peter's album, took uh, about two or three of those songs on Ace's solo album and about three of those songs off of Paul's album. And I wish they would have distributed them on Dynasty and, and literally got rid of I Was Made for Loving You and a, just a couple of tracks off of that freaking album. And I plug that in. See, man, there's discussions, bro, in that time and period that we will go through, that I remember, that you'll remember, that we went through, and what they should have done, which steps they should have took, what they shouldn't have done. We will hit all of that, man, and it will be interesting. We'll get freaking crucified, but I don't care. You know, Ace has been my favorite member probably since the reunion, since the reunion tour. And I loved him back when I was a teenager. He was my my favorite. And then it, it skipped back and forth between him and Paul back in the 80s because Ace was doing his own thing. But he's always, I've always loved him, especially since the reunion. And that's another thing we'll get into. But I love his new album, not to get off topic, but damn, if you listen to that album yet. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Have you not listened? If you you have listened. Oh, you don't I like listened. On this channel, I did a full review of that album, and you don't want to oh, watch it. Oh, I didn't watch it yet. Oh, my you God. don't want to watch it then. If you like this okay, album, okay. there are a couple That's songs on there that I absolutely love. Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't had the wherewithal to release them as singles, but stuff like Cherry Medicine and stuff and Walking on the Moon. Do you want to talk about the ultimate cheesy spaceman? Yeah, that I, mean, I know I know there's a couple. I'm not saying oh. this all, but far as a whole masterpiece <laughs> from him and the last, because I've got a couple of his albums, Orange and stuff, and I like stuff off of all of his albums, but not everything. But that one, I think, is the best one he's done probably since Fraley's comment. Now that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Okay. But um, anyway, let's uh, do this before you say what we need to say. And then I wanted to gotcha. just ask you a few things. There he is guys, the man with the plan. I can't believe you have those in such good damn shape. I had them all as a kid and I beat the shit out of them. Heads popped off. Hair got pulled out. 
Were those something I, you purchased later or are those things you've held on to? I got these 1978, right? Went that one so those, yeah. You've had those since the jump. Wow. Yeah. My mom got me all of them for Christmas that year. I wished I had the box and the, I cut the guitars out on back and had them stood up on my stereo. Like um, Peter's, I made him some drums and I had them set up and I got a picture of them somewhere. Like they're, I set them up like the kiss alive too. Okay. Gatefold. You know, and yeah, man, they just, I'm so glad I was able to hang on to them. But anyway, yeah. uh, yeah, man, just uh, Ace Fraley, guys. I love him. He's my favorite member now, and we're going to get into member. We're going to get into everything about this band that you guys are going to trip on. But you go ahead and say what you need to say, and we'll we'll close it out, and then I'll get to what I was going to ask you. About. Okay, I just want to say I, I appreciate everybody jumping on board and all the kind words you're saying about what we're doing. Um, Absolutely. I knew just from – uh replying to scott in comments of my other videos that he would be a good fit for this and it's turned out better than i could have ever imagined uh, i can't say we're going to keep churning out videos every day but clearly Not once a, yeah. once a week is is too little for us we got too much to say and we love Absolutely. doing we love doing this too much so I'm not one who goes on schedules. I'll never be that uh, YouTube suggested. Make sure you come out the same week at the same time. No, uh, no. I, I, I'm a firm believer. All the YouTube channels I've followed, I'm thrilled when I just wake up, turn it on. Hey, shit, they got a new video. I don't want to have to say that was a great video. Now I got to wait seven days for another one. Exactly. So, yeah. So we're going to put it out as we see fit. Go back, watch them when you want. If too many come out for you to keep up with, they're always going to be there. So uh, until next time, uh, which won't be long, uh, thanks for watching.